The major cruise lines have at last revealed what cruising out of the United States is going to be like. This includes where they will cruise to, what it will take to get onto the ship, and what the onboard experience will be like. It's not going to please some cruisers. It looks to blow some of your imminent cruisers out of the water, and it will be a very different experience to pre-lockdown cruising. I'm going to reveal what the cruise lines have submitted to the CDC, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, and what it will mean for you if they agree these ways of returning to cruising. The Healthy Sailing Panel, which was formed by Royal Caribbean and Norwegian Cruise Groups, have completed and issued a 65-page report with 74 recommendations for the return of cruising out of the USA. It's been submitted to the CDC and I want to share and discuss the six biggest things affecting us as cruisers the most. First of all, that cruise you have booked in the coming months looks unlikely to run even when no sail is lifted. The proposal is for limited and a staggered return to cruising out of the USA and that's to be put in place to trial and test these new protocols. They would be short cruises of a few nights calling on cruise line private islands or to places where they own and control the entire facility. So I guess like Virgin Voyages has their Bimini Club in the Bahamas. Ports, it suggests, could be expanded over time to include those that first of all are willing to accept US residents and cruising. Secondly, where the lines can be confident that they can safely and in a controlled way visit. And thirdly, where they agree to accept into their facilities any guests that may have become infected with COVID that need to be disembarked from the ship. That's a big ask. As we saw with the limited return to cruising in Europe, as cruisers do start to venture to ports, guests will only be able to leave ships in ports on cruise line excursions. No self-touring will be allowed, nor use of independent tour companies. The proposal suggests costs of these tours will be reduced, uh, a greater variety will be offered, and that they will focus on outdoor activities. They're likely only to be indoors if the cruise line excursion has the sole use of the facility. So, for example, there'll be no visits to bars or restaurants that are shared with locals or with others. Avoiding bringing infected passengers and crew onto the ship is the highest priority and the measure that really stands out in these proposals. So testing, therefore, is integral to the resumption of cruising out of the United States. Now, the US lines propose a slightly different approach to testing than that currently being used in Europe. So the panel of experts has proposed double testing. First of all, passengers have to provide a negative COVID test taken between five days and 24 hours before joining the ship. Now this has to be done ideally before people leave home to join the cruise, and that's to ensure people aren't traveling while they're infected. They then propose, subject to a cost-effective test being available, shipside testing before passengers board. Now if this is not possible, then they're gonna focus on that first round of testing. So why the two-stage approach? Well, they feel this is the safest approach to minimize false negatives and infected passengers getting on board. They don't feel, since the proposal says, that the European approach of the single test peer side is robust enough. Now, crew will go through a multi-series stage of tests and that combines with at least a seven-day quarantine as they join the ships. Now, to manage the screening and testing of passengers, cruisers will be given staggered timed check-in times that enables social distancing and the whole process and time of getting people on board. Now, whilst the monitoring of crew is more comprehensive and is gonna include some ongoing testing, both crew and passengers have to undergo a daily temperature check whilst they're on board. Now, these will likely take place in the evenings as apparently, according to the report, this is when you're more likely to show a high temperature if you are infected. Now, on some of the European cruises, they've been doing this uh, as you enter the dining venues. So this seems a simple way of doing those because people are going to be dining in the evening. Now, much to many, many cruisers' dismay, certainly based on the comments I get on the channel, masks and face coverings are going to play a role on board cruises out of the USA, certainly for as long as the CDC recommends their use in the United States. Now, they propose, the cruise lines propose, that passengers will need to wear them in all indoor areas, even when social distancing measures are in place. 
You won't have to wear them in cabins or when seated in dining venues and bars, even though they do have to have social distancing and procedures in place. Now, there will be a raft of social distancing measures. A new approach to the mustard drills is recommended, though it's not spelt out, but the idea is to reduce people congregating. Now, we've seen reports of mustard drills being done via cruise line apps, for example. But events like pool parties, which attract crowds gathering, will be scrapped and other across the ship social distancing measures will be in place. So these include spacing out of lounges at the pool, separating tables at restaurants or leaving some empty, blocking off certain seats in the theatres, blocking off some slot machines to allow space between guests and moving activities outdoors where possible. So for example, some of those fitness classes could be held on the ship deck rather than in the gym itself. Behind the scenes, there will be many other things and changes taking place. They include insulation of ventilation filters to screen out viruses, more use of fresh air and air conditioning, crew ideally being in single cabins, and also social distancing plans for crew facilities. There will be increased medical staff, more facilities, and plans on how to isolate and quarantine passengers if there is a breakout. So lots of other measures. Now, it's not completely clear from these proposals a couple of things. One, what happens if a passenger and their party are refused boarding if they fail testing or screening? This is a big, big unknown, and that really needs to be laid out in detail, in my view, who covers the costs, what happens. It's also not clear from this document on the details of what happens if there is an outbreak, other than there are plans to try and avoid whole ships being put into quarantine, through the use of onboard to track and trace. So they identify those who may have been exposed and then there's various plans on isolating those. And there's still not a lot of detail on what's gonna happen in relationships with ports, land-based agencies and medical facilities on land if there is a breakout. So that still needs to be clarified. Now, no doubt these will be made clearer as the lines get into the detail of return to sail and as they negotiate the specifics with the CDC and with the ports. When this will take place is, of course, a big unknown, and it's a gap because the CDC still has to fully engage with the lines and agree with them when cruising can return. But what do you think of these proposals? Would you be willing to sail as cruisers resume with these new rules? Remember, I have many cruise tips and update episodes, so why not subscribe to be updated when new ones are out?